and a privilege for me to be presenting tonight's speaker, Dr. Ezeldin Ebelish. Uh, known as the Gaza Doctor, he was raised in the Jabalia refugee camp in the Gaza Strip. He began his medical studies in Cairo, received his diploma from the University of London, did his residency in Israel, and received his master's in public health from Harvard University. He spent the years since devoted to medicine and his humanitarian work and the reconciliation of Israel and Palestine, treating patients on both sides of the political divide. He came to worldwide attention in 2009 when three of his daughters were lost to the violence in Gaza. It was his response, though, in this moment of unimaginable grief that made him a hero to many, calling not for revenge or escalation, but asking simply that his daughters be the last sacrifice on the road to peace between Israelis and Palestinians. He is the founder and the chairman of the Daughters for Life Foundation, and he's here tonight to talk about his book, I Shall Not Hate. Please welcome Dr. Izildin Abolish. coming. I am coming not to speak about the tragedies because each of us he faces tragedies in his life <clears throat> but most important that I am coming to speak with open heart mind and eyes to listen also not just to speak and I hope each of us is coming with the same will with open heart mind eyes and ears as a Palestinian who was born, raised, and lived in the Jabalia refugee camp. And Jabalia camp to live the life of refuge with all the suffering. As a child, that I don't know what is a childhood. as millions of children who are living in this world but never tasted their childhood. And sometimes I ask myself, why do we bring our children to live? For what? For suffering? And this suffering is not from God. It's man-made. It's what our hands as a human being committed to the other. And in our life, we face tragedies, ups and downs, challenges. And I thought of writing my book few years ago about my life experience not to show the suffering but to inspire the people that those man-made challenges we as man-made we can challenge them we can change them we can refuse them But everything in life has its time. And the time to write this book came after an awful, terrible tragedy. And for me, number 16 is printed in my mind. Sometimes I am confused to like it or not. But as a believer, as a Muslim with deep faith, I have to accept it. 
and I fully believe it was for good. 16th of September 2008, quarter to 5 p.m. is the day when I lost my wife of acute disease. And I thought, it's the end of the world. Because I fully believe the children, they need the mother. They need the father, but not the father. The mother is the one who breast feeds the children, the love, the care. The mother is the one who sacrifices for the sake of the children. And I am proud of my mother who pushed me to succeed. I am proud of the Palestinian mother as every other mother. The Palestinian mother is the hero. To raise, to sacrifice, and to give, but never take as every other mother. Then, 16th of January 2009, quarter to 5 p.m., when the unexpected happened, I never thought of it. It came to my mind during what do we call war, inversion, invasion, but I don't think it's a war or invasion. It's a craziness of a humanity. Quarter to five p.m. Just four months after I lost my wife. When an Israeli tank shell shelled my house, killing three of my daughters, niece, and severely wounding one daughter, niece, and two brothers. I didn't expect it, even at the same moment, I thought it's not my house. Because shilling was from everywhere. Till I saw the smoke, the dust, the cows inside the house. And just seconds after I left my daughter's room, the first shell came. So when I went to see my daughters, and those daughters, each of them is a separate world. I was blessed to have six lovely daughters that I am proud of. And if I have 20 of them, I will be blessed. They were full of love, of a brightness, of a humanity. I don't need to exert any effort to let them succeed. Their teachers used to fight to have them in their classes. They never succeeded. Less than 97% in their schools Anyone who knows them would love them. And to see them now, those lovely girls, became bards, drowning in a pool of blood. I started to find where is my arm. I can't know my arm or recognize her. But as a believer, as a Muslim, with this craziness, and no one knows about what happened. We were watching it, negotiating, saving lives. A human life, when we need to save, doesn't need any negotiation. It needs action and to stop the craziness. And I believe that everything from God is for good. You may dislike something 
and later on learn that it is for good and you may like something later on to learn that it is not good for you. I said, this tragedy must be for good and will remain for good. And they started to think of those severely wounded. What can I do for them? What can I do for my daughter Shada? with her eye on her cheek and her fingers. My niece Gaida, that I thought, she's killed. But thanks to my son, Muhammad, who said to me, Gaida took a breath. She is living. And now it's a time for the messengers of peace and doctors to save lives. 